What's up guys, Rob from Legit Finders Gaming here, bringing you a new Let's Play. This is Tom Clancy's Endor for the Xbox 360. Uh, and so just a couple of housekeeping notes about that. Yes, I am playing this on my Xbox console and I am using my capture card to record. So yes, unfortunately that means there's going to be a bit of audio delay uh, between my reactions to the games and like the things that you're going to see on screen. Um, I don't know why it's like about a half second to a second of, of delay. I'm not sure why I think, you know, obviously the answer to that issue is get a better capture card. Um, but I don't really do let's plays that aren't PC all that often. So whenever I do these old, uh, scuffed let's plays, you know, it's just part of the charm, but yeah, this is a game. I'm kind of surprised I never actually did a Let's Play of this game. Um, I don't know why I never did a Let's Play of this game uh, way back in the day. But yeah, we're going to do it now. And we're going to do a campaign. Uh, we're going to do World War Three, Of course. Uh, we're going to play on... Uh, expert, you know, just the base difficulty, just because why not? Uh, and we're gonna play as the United States, the Joint Strike Force. In evolution of the Marines, JSF is renowned for air and ground combat, embodying the motto high speed, low drag. They excel in precision, fire, and fast point. Moreover, their stealth and robotics technology are unrivaled. So, yeah, uh, if you're not familiar with this game or like the lore behind this game, uh, basically. You know, there's three factions of USA, Europe, and Russia, and they are at war with each other. Everyone's at war with each other. It's a three-way war. Um, I don't remember why. I read the book, and I still have the book. Uh, but yeah, we're going to play as the US. Um, and so the cool thing is you get, like, different uh, battalions you can choose that give you different bonuses, and then you have different slots. Uh, basically, each one of those, like, little pings on the order of battle represents a unit. And so like for our tanks, for example, that means we could only really ever call in a max of two tanks per battle um, at one time, which is not something I'm interested in. I don't particularly find riflemen and the uh, grenadier or engineers the greatest for the most part. Um, so I tend to pick either a mechanized or an armored battalion more often than not. Uh, but let's see what we got here. We got transports. Uh, not really interested in that. Um, transports plus 5% damage would be nice. Tanks plus 10% damage minus 5% HP. One unit of transports is not going to work. Not happening. Artillery. Uh, riflemen plus 5% damage. We might go with straight up transports 5% damage because the AI tends to really overuse aircraft. And so this game kind of works on like an RPS system to a certain extent. Um, yeah, where so like riflemen beat engineers, engineers can kind of hang with tanks, but then like the vehicles, transports beat helicopters tanks beat transports helicopters beat tanks and artillery is just there to like kind of like even the playing field a bit so yeah we'll go with uh, the fifth armored the thundering herd uh the fifth armored is responsible for providing armored assets as well as anti-armor systems and expertise in their employment we're going to be with colonel marcus brown very nice so yeah uh we need to take uh, a certain number of territories in order to win. So we'd have to take three faction capitals or control 28 territories to win. Yeah. So you can choose like one mission each turn in to uh, command personally. Um, and then we can go to our barracks here. Yes, you can use voice commands in this game, but obviously I'm not going to be. <laughs> um, so each of your units has different things you can upgrade. Let me see something real quick. Uh... Bup, bup, 
So you can upgrade your different units for different things, give them attack bonuses, defense bonuses, mobility bonuses. Um, and for your riflemen and engineers, I think, yes. Um, they have like six ability bonuses. Abilities basically uh, come with your attack bonuses for your vehicles. Like if you go down to attack three, uh, you get the Hesh shell, a height explosive. I just realized there's a typo in this game. That's supposed to be high explosive squash head. Interesting. Um, I never noticed that before, but you get like certain bonuses that uh, once your units are within range, you can hit like Y and it's basically like an ult kind of does like extra damage for stuff. Like they get uh, missile barrages and stuff like that. So uh, you can also upgrade your, your supports. Um, these allow you to do things like call in airstrikes, uh, use electronic warfare or force recon. Um, forward command is nice. And you can also change your camo. So right now we are equipped with Desert Storm camo, which looks pretty cool. Uh, what else we got? We got Ghost, which I'm pretty sure is just all black. Not bad. And then we also have Straight Up Tan. I think we're going to rock Ghost. Ghost looks pretty cool. In my opinion. I like the, the black look of the tanks. Actually, you know what? Nah, you know. We'll rock Desert Storm. Desert Storm looks cool. Get a nice, you know, bunch of camo in there. Even though we're not going to be fighting in a desert. Not that it matters. It doesn't actually matter at all what your camo is. But, uh, yeah, usually for my bonuses, I'd like to get... UAV kind of early with my command vehicle just because it's really nice to have It's just really nice to have the ability to survey the battlefield kind of at will almost um, And We'll probably boost our Tanks and transports a little bit to start. We'll give them each attack one and defense one. Just because I tend to use those two vehicles the most. Tanks and transports. I don't use helicopters that much, to be quite honest. They're pretty frail uh, in this game for some reason. But there's also different kinds of battles. So that's a conquest... This is also a conquest, so I'm just going to defend from the Russians for the first turn because if they start getting into our actual territory, it becomes kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, so yeah, we're going to attack the Russians. Or defend against the Russians. So yeah, you can see, like, your different missions here, but we're just going to go in to defend. He's an airborne battalion, so he's probably going to be using... A lot. Probably gonna be using a lot of helos, I would imagine, this man. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna spawn in transports right away. Um, so basically the way that the game works is there's these uplinks that you need to secure in order to like take control of the battlefield and they give you bonuses such as like command points and stuff. Um, and we have our UAV recon, so we're gonna deploy that over Lima. You can watch him shoot his UAV up in the air. So the conquest battle is all about uplinks. If you control more than half the uplinks in the battle space, you win the game. You can also just wipe your opponent off the map of their units. Uh, there's conquest battles, and I think there's like one other type of uh, engagement. Battles is just a straight up like murder your opponent as hard as possible. Yeah, and then there's also like, you know random uh units like you have npc units they have npc units stuff like that so we're gonna load our units up into this transport for them to get over to a quicker so they're already capturing z okay so we have 
transports going towards Lima already. So I might send my tanks over there when they come in. Use fast back IFVs to transport infantry across the battlefield. Yep, so we'll send our IFVs over this way. Um, we'll deploy a second unit of riflemen for now. Okay, so we see tanks over there. So yeah, I'm gonna, just going to send my tanks over this way so that those transports uh, don't get any funny ideas. Yeah, so there's gunships already up in the air here. Yeah, we'll send this guy to upgrade this for air support. So you see things can get kind of hectic kind of quickly, but uh, if they want to come party with me down, yeah, well, our transports will smoke these gunships right out of the air. Very, uh, very foolish of them to send gunships in against my uh, transports. Hostile 3 is down. Oh, they lost to the AI, or the NPCs. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. Tactical blunder, very interesting. So your tanks can shoot at helicopters and stuff, they just won't do much damage. Um, we're gonna spawn in a second unit of transports, because I'm imagining... Oh, we have them anyway. Yeah, we'll get two and two for now. Alright, you calm down. Schwarzkopf tanks are more than a match for IFC transports. I see some tanks getting a little uh, frisky over here. Which is fine. Alright, you guys load up into the transports. And once these tanks are deployed, I can go over and smoke those transports. So yeah, it's a, it's a simple strategy game, but it is a lot of fun. This is I think we can do this. This is Pack Mule. All right, let's send these two units over to Foxtrot. My tanks want to actually like get into the battle instead of getting stuck. You do have to babysit your units sometimes, they do get stuck on random crap, although it looks like my transports are more than handling the Russians. So I'll send these units off kind of by themselves to get Bravo. Um, we'll keep this battle group kind of together then, we'll send these guys over to Bravo. They're almost up to Foxtrot, which is nice. So go ahead and secure. So that's not an actual enemy unit. Like the, it's just isn't like a random NPC type. Or it is an enemy unit, but it's not like one you'd have to engage. Uh, tanks, okay. I'm gonna send my tanks over to deal with that. Because they will smoke the shit out of my infantry. Surprise, bitch. I also have an airstrike on deck if I need. I'll have, now that these tanks are engaged yes, with mine, I'll have my uh, transports come in and help them out. If hit from the sides, so they will actually take damage. We are going to load up and then go try to get Zulu away from them if we can. But yeah, so now that they've, my tanks have their attention, my transport should be okay to come in and help. 
Yeah, so we lost the tank, which is fine. You can also order units to evac, and you can, like, spawn in fully healthy units, which if they go down to two bars, I might tell these tanks to pull out and get a fully fresh unit of tanks in. Yeah, but it's okay. Alright. I'll send you guys here. Send you guys in here. I'm gonna tell you guys to evac. And you guys are just gonna stay here for now. Ooh, enemy. Yeah, okay. We're gonna tell them to secure that so that way these transports can go and deal with uh, those helos. Because they are attacking somebody. I guess probably five, but yeah. Oh, they were attacking unit six. I see. Yeah, now that there's two transfers in there, those guys are done. They're gonna get whacked. And when the units, enemy units are down like this, whoops, you can actually tell your units to completely wipe them off the face of the map, uh, which resets their experience. So if they're like an experienced enemy unit, um, it will reset their experience down to zero, like you see there, hostile killed, so. I guess we'll go kill these engineers while we're here. These guys are being engaged by what? Oh. They were attacking the uplink for some reason. <laughs> we'll call an airstrike on these guys because we have the command points, we might as well. A lot of damage, as you can see. Okay, we're gonna tell our units to spread out. <laughs> Ooh, got some tanks going on. Because when you get to the victory screen like that, when it says victory in, yeah, I know, they're getting fucking smoked here. Um, there we go, my tanks are now engaging. When you get to that point where it says victory in, you that usually triggers uh, your each uh, country's like, essentially WMD. Uh, so we get a kinetic strike, which is two missiles fired from a space station that is essentially like operates as like a nuke, but without the actual radiation. The Euros get a, you see annihilation, that means there's no enemy units left on the map. Uh, the Euros get an electronic strike. And uh, yeah, I see we have kinetic strike. And the Russians get a nuke, which they just used as the game ended. Uh, they get like an actual nuclear missile. Yeah, so five units survived, three units promoted, so our two riflemen and one of our uh, transports survived. You can see all the mission stats here and stuff like that. So we're gonna go to exit. And then it'll tell you the results of the battles that you weren't involved in. Things shook out across the map. We didn't mess around on the home front. Russia's uh, has not won a battle yet. And this battle did not resolve. So now we can do either a defense if we want to go after the Russians. Or we can try to go into Europe. 
Um, and normally I do go for the European just because there's more territories that you can kind of conquer and take over and stuff uh, to get to your 28 territories. But who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll spice it up. The real issue is like if they take this territory, then they can just be like, haha, I'm going to come over and get America again. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this Let's Play, even though this is an older game. It's one I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I don't know why I've never done it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys again next time.